Hi guys, this is part two of the pre-rounding template and we were at the ambulatory status. Ambulatory status and living situation is one of the things I deeply care about my patient because that will affect your discharge. If you are not mindful of patient's ambulatory status at home and their living situation, sometime you will be ready to discharge the patient and you find out that, oops, the patient's homeless, can't send them out to the street because they are too sick. Um, sometimes with ambulatory status, you find out that, oops, the patient was walking independently at home. At the hospital, the patient has not been able to walk at all. Uh, physical therapy has to be consulted. And if you had been mindful of this at the time of discharge, you could have consulted physical therapy way in advance. Or at the time of admission, you know that the illness that the patient has is really bad and you know that the patient is homeless, then right in the beginning, you could have consulted social work. So being mindful of ambulatory status and their living situation helps to expedite their discharge from the hospital when the medical things are taken well care of. Um, I have a couple of examples I wanna share with you. There was a guy who was admitted to the hospital for really bad hip pain, um, which started maybe a week before. And before that, the guy was completely functional. He was manager at a gym. And he was admitted to the hospital, they worked him up, decided that the hip pain was due to gout, and they discharged him home. And when they discharged him, the patient was still unable to walk. And I think in my opinion, that was a bad decision making because you do not send a patient who cannot walk home. And in this case, physical therapy had not evaluated the patient as well. Two days later, he was a bounce back. He came back to the hospital. And, and that was a bad decision making in my opinion. At the end, when we worked him up, it was decided that he had osteomyelitis of the hip. Uh, he was a little bit of a complicated case, but you do not send someone who can't walk home, especially if they were able to walk at home before. Um, and living situation, you would have plenty of examples where patients are homeless, um, and you don't think about their discharge until the day of discharge comes. And oftentimes it happens that it's Friday evening that you're like, okay, the medical problems are taken care of. Now let's discharge the patient. But now it's the weekend and you're stuck with the patient over the weekend. So think about the living situation and the ambulatory status um, right when the patient comes to the hospital. Especially because the ambulatory status, because you know you see a patient every morning, they're sleeping, they're always in bed. You don't even know if they're walking or not. So it's good to be mindful of how much they can walk. The common question I ask is that, um, if I go back a month or two ago at home, how much can you walk? Can you walk two blocks? Can you climb two flights of stairs? Do you use a walker to walk? Do you use wheelchair? Are you essentially bed bound? Uh, smoking, drinking and drug use is usually uh, useful for risk stratification. Uh, for example, if someone has smoked for a long time there and they have chest pain, then you are thinking more of cardiac causes. Um, or pulmonary causes versus if they never smoked at all, um, alcohol, IV drugs, uh, again, IV drug for osteomyelitis and invasive infections. Uh, so out of this tab, the most important thing I focus on is their ambulatory status and living situation. Uh, let's move on now to the medications. And medication is another extremely important thing to know what medication is someone taking at home. Extremely important because this is something that has happened. I have seen it personally is that, you know, patients come to the hospital, they're old, they're sick. Uh, they may not be the most intelligent person or they're just sick, their memory is bad. They don't know what medication they're taking at home. They don't bring it to you and you don't know. You send them home with new medication and now they're taking the old medication and new medication and now they're over medicated and they come back to the hospital because of side effect of over medication. I have seen this in case of metoprolol. A patient was taking metoprolol tartarate at home. Uh, during the admission, it was uh, never found out that he was taking metoprolol at home and he was sent home with metoprolol succinate. So essentially at home, he now started to take metoprolol tartarate on top of the succinate and he came back with bradycardia, I had to be admitted again. So become extremely mindful of what medications they're taking at home. Ideally, it would be that a patient would just bring in all their home medications, but that happens extremely rarely. In that case, you can ask the family member like, hey, can you, a lot of people have smartphone, can you take pictures of all the medications? I need to know exactly what medications they're taking at home. 
um, this works sometimes, doesn't work sometimes. The best way for me to find out the home medication is just to ask the patient what pharmacy do you pick up the medication from. And you call the pharmacy and have them fax the medication that the patient has picked up in the last three months to the nursing st station. And when you have time or maybe the next day you go to the, the nursing station and you, you write it down. Uh, but this is extremely important for the reason I just told you what medication they're taking at home. Uh, the other one is the hospital medication. Usually I write the more important hospital medications we're giving to the patient. And the home medication we're continuing, I just draw like an arrow to, to denote that we're giving the patient that medication in the hospital. Uh, usually the medications I care in the hospital is the antibiotics when we started them and when we ended them specifically. Um, IV Lasix, how many times and what days did we give it to the patient? Uh, so that's, that goes in the hospital medication section. Um, I have a section for radiology. Um, usually sometimes the ED, you know, ED tends to get imaging. Sometimes if it's too much to write in the ED section, I write it here. Or if we get it um, during the admission itself, I like to write it down here. Because what happens is that let's say someone has headache and we got a CT scan two days ago. And, you know, carrying 10 patients, it's easy to forget that, forget that hey, we had a CT head on this patient two days ago and during the round. Because you forgot about that, the attending just says that, oh yeah, let's get a CT scan of the head. And now this patient essentially got two CT scan in two days interval. But if you could have remembered that, you could have said that, hey, we have a CT from two days ago. So always good to write what uh, imaging you got in the hospital. Uh, just for a quick reference, um, radiology. The other section is microbiology. And microbiology, usually I write the urine culture, blood culture results if we have any. So that's microbiology and I write the date as well so that we are mindful when we last do the culture. Misc any other extra information um, that you want to write down about the patient. That's that. Um, and here you have a diet, DVD prophylaxis and bowel regimen. Um, now this information can change on a daily basis so not extremely, extremely important. But diet, I want to make sure that I order diet on my patient if they can eat just so that they don't go hungry. Uh, DVD prophylaxis, uh, this is criteria called PADUA criteria, P-A-D-U-A, you can look up, look up on MD Calc. Uh, that helps determine who needs DVD prophylaxis and who does not need DVD prophylaxis. Um, and then the other thing is the bowel regimen. And again, the bowel regimen is important because sometimes, um, you know, American diet is really bad. People are really constipated. Uh, these old people come to the hospital, dad and had bowel movement for five days. And it's on the time of discharge, you're just like surprised. The nurse says that this patient hasn't pooped for five days. Now, are you going to send a patient like that home or not? So I usually leave my patient default on bowel regimen. Now, someone may disagree with me because that uh, could lead to over medication. But for me, for the most part, I leave people on bowel regimen on default. I usually leave a dog who said Senna two taps BID. Um, so in summary, this is my uh, admit um, template. Uh, usually, um, well, some of the information I feel when I'm pre-rounding, some of the information like ambulatory status, living situation, I, I feel when I talk to the patient. But once most of the thing in this template is complete, I have um, I have a really detailed, thorough understanding on what uh, on the situation, the illness my patient has. Um, so this is the, the first pre-rounding template I use. Now I have a daily template I use on top of that. We'll talk about that briefly in the next video.